If you're in the market for an electric estate, your options are very few and far between. You can have the Porsche Taycan or this, the MG5. The MG5 has been with us for a few years and now it's time for its update. If you look closely, you'll find that the bumpers are new, the rear lights are new, they've got a new LED signature, they've got new wheels, but the most new part of the MG5 is this front end. It looks much sleeker than before and more distinctive actually. The previous car wasn't unattractive, but it was perhaps a little dated looking and a bit anonymous. Taking some inspiration from the sharp looking MG4, the logo is now up on the bonnet. That makes the charging port more obvious here. It's in the center as before, which is actually really quite convenient for when you're pulling up to a charger. Right now, MG offers just a single battery size of this car and they call it the long range model. It's a 61.1 kilowatt hour battery and the range is up to 400 kilometers, depending which model you go for. This particular model is exclusive, so it's got the more stylish, newer alloy wheels and so the range is a little bit less for that. When it comes to topping up the battery, it can be charged at up to 87 kilowatts on a fast charger or 11 kilowatts on an AC slower charger and that's actually really quite useful for curbside charging. If you're charging up at home, it's usually up to seven kilowatts and it'll take up to nine and a half hours to do a full battery charge. The core architecture of the MG5 hasn't changed, so it's as spacious as ever. MG has taken the opportunity to redo the whole dashboard. It also has got a whole new center console. So we'll go through this in a bit more detail. In the middle here, you have a drive selector. As before, it's a rotary drive selector. You push it down for park and you just turn it to reverse, neutral or drive. Very simple, couldn't be easier to drive it. There's two different mode buttons here, one for the driving mode itself, so you can choose Eco, Sport or Normal, and it always defaults to the normal when you get in. Or this button here is for what MG calls CURS, so that's a Kinetic Energy Recovery System. Most people just call that Brake Energy Regeneration. The CURS system has three different levels, and it goes from nearly coasting on one extreme to nearly one pedal driving on the other. Behind the drive selector, there's two decent sized cup holders, and under your arm is a hidden storage cubby as well, which is quite useful. One of the biggest design differences in the center console is that it's now raised up, and whereas the USB ports used to be on top before, now they're below here. And there's also a large space to put your phone or other devices or lots of other things, to be honest, because there's quite a bit of room down there. It just adds to the practicality, to be honest, and it makes it look more modern, too. One thing we're not quite so convinced by is this blue detailing on the air vents. That's on all the models and it probably looks okay if you go for a silver or a black car, but with the red paintwork here, we're not so sure that it's a contrast that works. More impressive and perhaps universally approved of will be the new touchscreen. It comes from the MG4 and it runs MG's proprietary software. That means it has a lot of features in it and perhaps it isn't the fastest responding, but generally it works quite well. More importantly, perhaps, it has a lot of features built in, so navigation is standard, though we suspect that most people will use the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is standard across the lineup. In terms of quality, the interior is pretty solid. The materials used, they look pretty decent in photographs, and to touch, they're not bad either. One caveat to that is we're driving the exclusive model, the top of the range model, and these seats, for instance, they're upholstered in a synthetic leather. It adds to the interior, there's no doubt about that. Those that like the seating position of a car a bit lower down than an SUV will appreciate the MG5. Saying that, there's lots of adjustment in the driving position. This model has electric seats, as you can see, plenty of adjustment up and down, in and out. And the steering wheel itself, while manually adjustable, is adjustable in and out and up and down over quite a long range too. So most drivers will get comfortable easily. Those in the rear are well catered for too. There's a flat floor all the way across for a start, so even if you are sitting in the middle, your feet are going to have plenty of room. Saying that, the width of the car means that it's probably best only for two adults. Three to squeeze if you need to. There are isofix points on the outer two seats, so it's easy to get child seats in here if you want. And in the middle, if you're not sitting there, there's an armrest and two cup holders. In terms of other niceties, you get the pockets here in the backs of the seats and there are both USB-A and USB-C ports down here in the middle. Other practicalities, the back seats split 60-40. It does create a bit of a step with the boot, but it does mean you can open up the space to carry quite a lot of luggage. The boot holds nearly 500 litres up to the luggage cover and MG actually quotes a figure of nearly 600 litres if you load it up to the roof and the shape of the body style of course allows for that. That's quite comparable to the most popular electric SUVs around at the moment. Not a lot has changed with how the MG5 drives, but arguably not a lot needed to be changed. It is a smooth, quiet, electric estate. 
Um, it errs on the side of practicality and sensibility rather than driving enthusiasm, but you know, how many buyers really care about such things? And it's not that it's bad to drive by any means, it's just it is definitely designed to be something that's efficient and smooth. And a really good thing, comfortable. So many cars these days are designed to be dynamic and have firm suspension and very little body lean. But MG doesn't seem to have worried about the, all of that with the MG5. And again, I'm not saying that it's bad on the road, but it just is comfortable and that is its priority. That's a really good thing. It's probably why taxi drivers have been happy to buy it, to be honest. It is a comfortable car to bring passengers around in. As we discovered in the original MG5, it can be a very efficient car if you drive efficiently, if you don't use all of its performance. And indeed, if you change the driving modes, if you change from the default comfort down to eco, the range reading or the range estimation on the dashboard goes up, which shows you that that's worth doing if you really want to eke out the range. As I said earlier, MG quotes up to 400 kilometers, just over 400 kilometers for the model on the smaller wheels um, and a bit less for this exclusive model. We think that if you're driving on the motorway at higher speeds, higher cruising speeds, then you're probably going to more, get more like 300. But if you stick to urban driving, stick to slower speeds, you are going to get close to the 400 kilometers. The final driving mode is sport mode and that gives you maximum response and if you use that apparently the MG5 will do 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in under 8 seconds. That's pretty quick going. The MG5 as before uses a front mounted electric motor so it's a front wheel drive car. It's rated at up to 156 horsepower which is adequate for a car like this but interestingly maximum torque is 279 newton meters and that's quite high actually in comparison to other cars with similar power output so it means that the car is quite quick off the line in an urban environment it just feels nippy it feels pleasant to drive and the suspension does a really good job of soaking up all urban bumps i mentioned the three levels of brake energy regeneration that the car has as well and you can easily select that by this button in the center console on top of all that the brake pedal itself is quite well modulated so it's smooth it's easy to drive smoothly and not all electric cars get that right MG does fit a lot of active safety equipment as standard to the MG5 and that's quite reassuring some of it is perhaps a little enthusiastic to keep you in lane etc but it does all work pretty well there's a 360 degree camera system as well, which is great for parking, for maneuvering, but also when you're in busy traffic. The updated MG5 carries on where the previous one left off. It's just as spacious, just as practical. It's incredibly good value, it's well specced, and the electric powertrain is pretty decent. To all of that, it adds a bit more modernity. It looks better, it's a bit more distinctive. And while the original was very popular with taxi drivers, we suspect this updated model will be even more popular with the wider public due to its distinctive new look. If you want to read more about the MG5 and indeed all of its rivals, you can check it all out on our website. It's completecar.ie and it's a great resource for finding your next new car.